Welcome to the TxDOT Dallas District's public meeting for the 2023-2026 Rural Transportation Improvement Program, or Rural TIP. My name is Tamela Spillman, and I'm the District Advanced Transportation Planning Director. Additional TxDOT personnel joining us this evening are Shantrice Harris, a planner in the District ATP office, Alex Vasquez, a transportation funding specialist in the District ATP office as well. Today, we will look at the counties in the Dallas district and all the roads under the district's care. We will also review the basics of the rural tip and why it is important for you to be here with us today. We will explain how the projects included in the program are selected and classified in order to make the most of the program. Once you understand all of this, you will have the opportunity to review all the projects the Dallas district has included in the 2023-2026 program. We will also go over funding by answering questions about where the money to pay for these projects comes from and how it gets distributed. Lastly, we will outline all the options you have to comment on these projects in their priority. Unfortunately, we will not be able to respond to verbal comments or questions today as this meeting has been pre-recorded. However, you will have opportunities to make comments or ask questions through email and or traditional mail if you choose to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to personally thank everyone for taking time from your busy schedules to be with us today. Typically, this meeting would be held in person in your local community, but due to the unique circumstances of the pandemic and our concern for the spread of this contagious virus, we are conducting this meeting virtually. November 7th of 2000 was the last deathless day on Texas roadways. More than 75,000 innocent lives have been lost to fatal crashes. About 10 people have died every day in a crash in the state over the past several years. Speeding, drunk driving, and distracted driving contributes to most crashes and fatalities on our roadways. Everyone can help and join us in our In the Street campaign by practicing safe driving habits while behind the wheel and encouraging others to do the same. We all play a role in keeping our roads and fellow drivers safe. Now for a little background on the Dallas District. The Dallas District includes all seven counties shown on this map. Benton, Collin, Dallas, Rockwall, Kaufman, Ellis and Navarro counties. This map shows the boundary of the North Central Texas Council of Governments, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will discuss the role the MPO plays in the TIP process later in this presentation. The North Central Texas Council of Governments planning area boundary is shaded in pink. Projects identified within this area are included in the MPO's Metro Transportation Improvement Program, or Metro TIP. Projects outside of the North Central Texas Council of Governments planning area are included in the district's rural TIP. Of the seven Dallas district counties outlined in red, only projects in Navarro County are included in the Dallas district's 2023-2026 rural TIP. What is the Rural Transportation Improvement Program, or Rural TIP? The Rural TIP is a list of local projects to be included in a TxDOT district over the next four years. This means all projects included in the TIP are expected to be underway within four years following its approval. So these are the changes you can expect to go to contract in the near future. The Rural TIP is multimodal meaning it includes projects relating to highways, bicycle and pedestrian facilities, transit services, and freight projects, as well as the preliminary studies used to define those projects. The rural tip is meant to show regional agreement on the need and priority of transportation projects, so all parties involved can be sure they are making the best investment for the community. 
It is also expected to be consistent with the projects and objectives included in the regional long range transportation plans to ensure that all agencies are working towards the same goal. The rural tip is part of the statewide transportation improvement program or STIP. By federal law, no project can receive federal funding unless it is listed in the STIP. Now that we've overviewed the basis of the rural tip, you might ask, why is this program important to me? Your participation in the development of the rural tip is important because funding secured by this process is intended to address your community's most immediate needs. By providing comments on the priority of the projects included, you are helping us identify regional priorities. Through your attendance this evening, you are having a regional impact. You are helping us be more effective with your money, and you are also ensuring that we are investing where we should. Metropolitan planning organizations, or MPOs, and local governments are responsible for selecting projects within their boundaries. TxDOT, through the district office, is responsible for selecting all projects relating to the state's transportation system and other national roadways. This includes interstates and state and U.S. highways, but most importantly, this can also include the form to market roads you use every day. The projects we will review today should respond to local needs. It is our responsibility to provide you with the opportunity to provide input on which projects should be advanced. Once projects have been defined, they are evaluated according to their scale and classified according to the funding they require, as well as their potential impact. Large projects are categorized as regionally significant projects and are included as standalone items. An example of a large project would be adding lanes along an existing road or building a new road. To simplify this budgeting and planning process, smaller projects are lumped together into 11 separate subcategories, which are referred to as grouped projects. Grouped projects include things like landscaping, safety lighting, traffic signals, bridge replacements, new bicycle and pedestrian facilities, and minor preventative maintenance projects, such as sill coats and overlays. This grouping practice facilitates the federal funding of smaller projects. An example of a smaller project that would be grouped is resurfacing the pavement along an FM road. So, we have reviewed the purpose of the rural tip, why it is important, and how projects are selected. Now, let's look at the projects in the district's program. This map shows all projects included in the 2023-2026 Rural Tip for Navarro County. This map is available for review on the meeting website. The brown lines and dots identify projects to be implemented in the next fiscal year. The light blue lines and dots represent projects to be implemented in fiscal year 2024. The tan lines and dots represent projects for fiscal year 2025 and finally, the dark blue lines and dots identify projects for fiscal year 2026. The number on the map corresponds to the projects listed on the next few slides. We will review these projects in detail. This table shows the details for the projects listed in the District 2023-2026 Rural TIP program, which were highlighted on the previous page. This project list is available for review on the meeting website. We have grouped projects by interstates, state highways, FM roads, and county roads. Along Interstate 45, we have two landscaping projects, one at the intersection of State Highway 31D and another at US 287, scheduled for fiscal year 2023. We have a bridge replacement on Business 45 at Post Oak Creek, scheduled for 20, fiscal year 2025. And we have another landscaping project on Business 45F at East First Avenue, scheduled for fiscal year 2023. 
on Business 287T from Business 45F to Interstate 45, we have a seal coat pro project scheduled for fiscal year 23. On State Highway 2022, on State Highway 22, from Hill County Line to FM 667, we have a seal coat project for fiscal year 23. And on State Highway 31, we have two projects. We have a project from west of Trail Ridge Drive for landscaping in 2023. And we also have a bridge replacement at Post Oak Creek scheduled for fiscal year 2024. On State Spur 294, from State Highway 287 to the end of maintenance, we have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 2023. And on FM 55 from State Highway 31 to FM 709, we have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 2023. On FM 636 at Willow Creek, we have a bridge replacement project scheduled for fiscal year 2026. We also have a rehab project on FM 636 from County Road 460. 4668 or Morgan Springs Road to State Highway 31, scheduled for fiscal year 2026. On FM 637, from FM 2859 to US 287, we have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 2023. On FM 639, from the end of maintenance to FM 55, we have a re rehab project that will add shoulders scheduled for fiscal year 2026. On FM 642 from FM 638 to FM 709, we have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 23. We also have two projects on FM 709 uh, for seal coats. One project is from FM 2555 to west of 16th Avenue. The other is from State Highway 31 to Navarro Mills Harbor Marina Road. Both of these sale cult projects are scheduled for fiscal year 2023. We have three projects on FM 744. The first project is the bridge replacement of Strain Branch Creek for fiscal year 2026. We also have a bridge replacement at FM 744 and Richland Creek Relief scheduled for fiscal year 2026. And lastly, on FM 744 from FM 1126 East to State Highway 22, we have a rehab project scheduled for fiscal year 26. On FM 1126 from Interstate 45 to State Highway 22, we have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 23. And on FM 2555 from FM 709 to West Park Row in Corsicana, we have a rehab project that will add shelters scheduled for fiscal year 2026. On FM 2555 from State Highway 22 to FM 709, we also have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 2023. On FM 2859, from FM 637 to FM 1393, we have another seal coat project scheduled for 2023. On FM 2930, from FM 55 East to FM 1126 North and Cryer Creek, we have a rehab project that will add shoulders scheduled in FY 2024. On FM 3041 from Chambers Creek to FM 1129, we have a rehab project that will add shoulders scheduled for fiscal year 2023. On FM 3243 from the end of maintenance to State Highway 287, we have a seal coat project scheduled for fiscal year 2026. We have County Road 2250 at Rush Creek Tributary Bridge Replacement scheduled for fiscal year 2024. We also have a bridge replacement of County Road 2305 at Penn Oak Creek scheduled for fiscal year 2026. We have County Road 4250 Bridge Replacement at Alligator Creek scheduled for fiscal year 2026. On County Road 4791 and Mill Creek, we have a bridge replacement scheduled for fiscal year 2024. And lastly, 
County Road 5127 at Rush Creek, bridge replacement scheduled for fiscal year 2024. This map shows additional planning projects for Navarro County, which are being included for informational purposes only. These projects are not included in the 2023-2026 World TIP at this time. When funding is identified and the design plans have been completed, these projects will be included in a future rural tip. This map, as well as the project details on the next slide, are also available on the meeting website for review. There are two projects planned for the future widening of US 287 from two to four lanes. One section is from 45 to Southeast County Road 3010, and another segment is from 45 to County Road Southeast 2040. We also have a rehab project on FM 739 from US 287 to Interstate 45 Frontage Road, which will rehab the road and add shoulders. On FM 709 from Liberty Hill Park to State Highway 31, we have a rehab project that will also add shoulders. And lastly, on FM 744 at Rush Creek, we have a bridge replacement project. Again, these projects are being provided for informational purposes only and will not be included in the 2023-2026 rural tip. The rural tip functions as a budget for the district and it is fiscally constrained. Like the budget of a household, the rural tip must be realistic about the amount of funding available to cover all the needs. Frequently, we identify more improvement needs than we have money to implement. This is where prioritizing becomes necessary. So far, we have discussed the list of proposed improvements to be included in the 2023-2026 rural tip program, but we haven't discussed where the money is coming from. Funds for transportation improvements come from three main sources. The first source of funding is the federal government. Through the establishment of the Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act, or the FAST Act, the federal government allocates these funds to projects through a process established by the Federal Highway and Transit Administrations. The second source of funds comes from TxDOT. Similar to the federal government, TxDOT also allocates a section of our budget for these projects through the Unified Transportation Program's 12 funding categories. And the main final source of funds comes from the local governments. Once the need has been identified and the source of funds have been defined, the rural tip helps local governments assess the funding requirements to match those of the federal government and state government and their capacity to meet them. Now that we have reviewed the projects in the rural tip, you may be wondering, so what's next? This timeline is, illustrates the rural tip process and where we currently are in this process. Once your comments have been collected and considered, the district will provide TxDOT with a revised rural tip for approval and integration into the statewide document. The statewide transportation improvement program consists of the rural tip of all of the 25 TxDOT districts in the state, as well as the metro tips from all the MPOs. The timeline above shows where the rural tip process fits into this larger effort. Once the STIP is approved by the federal government, everyone's projects are funded and become one step closer to getting constructed. Now that you're familiar with the 2023-2026 rural tip, we would like to hear from you. Please let us know what you think. You can submit your comments through the link on the meeting website at www.keepitmovingdallas.rtip or you can make a comment through the traditional mail. You can also email your comments to the address provided. Comments must be postmarked or otherwise received by Monday, May 16, 2022. So please be sure to send your comments before this date. 
This presentation and additional meeting materials are available online and will remain available until 11.59 p.m. Monday, May 16th. Thank you for your time today. This concludes our meeting.